don't forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown from the Bay. Yo, yo. We back. It's your boy Popalot. Mob ties. We on our way to Tennessee with it. Memphis. South Memphis. Lemoyne Street. Housing Project to be exact. Where we gonna talk about a guy by the name of George Hewlett. Or we can just call him G-Train. Which the whole city know him by. One of the most infamous gangsters to come out that city, along with Craig Pettis. Um, and to be honest, as gangster as Memphis is, let alone South Memphis, um, it's surprising that we don't have more stories. And that's my bad. I'm going to get on to it. I know we covered the pokey story, but back to G-Train. Um before we even kind of talk about G Train, let's kind of talk about Memphis for the people that never been to Memphis. Motherfucker ain't seen First 48 and none of that shit. Um, never heard of Yo Gotti, Black Youngster, Dolph, or any of this, and don't know where the. So, Memphis is located in Tennessee. And Memphis, Tennessee is part of the Bible Belt. And it has more churches. Than gas stations. So y'all let that set in. In 2007. According to FBI data. Memphis was listed as the most dangerous city in the nation. So. Um, to kind of put that in perspective. You know they have the murder capital. Um, and they have like the. I guess the car theft leading state with the car theft. Memphis is the most, is the city where you have the most chance of something bad just happening to your ass. <laughs> Period. Who knows what it is. You might get stumped. You might get shot. You might get robbed. You might get abducted. <clears throat> you never know. But your chances of something happening to you is highest in Memphis, regardless. And that was in 2007. Um, now in a city of 600,000 plus people, it said that there's over 300 gangs and sets operating in Memphis. Um, and pretty much from my research, it looks like, um, some of the same gangs from Chicago and based on my research, according to Memphis police, they are going to say like Chicago, um, Gangs invaded Memphis somewhat because you're going to have your vice lords. You're going to have your gangster disciples. Um, I even seen he has a, some stones um, when I was doing the research on G-Train. Now, um, a little a difference with G-Train and LMG, they're not going to be like... Um, what I would say, like, uh, one of these franchise gangs, like the Bloods or the Crips, for instance, where you're going to have them originating in California, but then they move and spread to other states like New York and Georgia, or even the Gangster Disciples, um, Vice Lords. A lot of these gangs were were started and founded in certain cities, those two gangs in Chicago, um, and then moved and traveled. But then they have certain gangs that are just home-based gangs, um, and they just kind of originate from a housing project or a street or a group of guys, and that's only that one gang. It's no other gang in another state, so... That's going to be pretty much the difference in G-Train 
was part of a gang called LMG. Um, and there's many derivatives or many acronyms to that name. But the one that stood out to me is going to be the Love Murdering Gangsters. And I'm sure had some play on Lemoyne Gardens, um, which is the housing project where they were from. Now, let's talk a little bit about Lemoyne Gardens because you can't talk about G-Train without talking about Lemoyne Gardens. Now, Lemoyne Gardens was a housing project that was located in South Memphis near the Lemoyne Owen College. Um, it opened its first 60 structures in October of 1941. Then in 1943, it opened up another 41. And all the project was built for low-income African Americans. It contained 842 two-story townhouse-style apartments or units in nine different building types. It was constructed and reinforced in concrete and then finished in brick. It was rehabilitated between 1975 and 1977 by the Memphis Housing Authority. Memphis Housing Authority Attorney A.C. Wharton announced in August of 1996 that the project had been listed on the National Register. One year later, crews began to demolish the buildings. They became victims of urban revitalization or gentrification what we call it on mob ties and the project has been replaced by a mixed income community that is now called college park now with the amount of gangs that we talked about that they had in memphis it said that g train was into it with the gangster disciples and um from some accounts the beef could have started in the early 90s when they beat up one of his brothers really bad. Um, the beef ended up turning into a shoot on sight beef. I saw some accounts where they said G-Train would dress up as a gangster disciple in their colors, calling out their calls. Um, and when the rivals would respond, they would open fire on them. One incident that stands out is going to be the murder of a guy named Daryl Jordan, or Cowboy is what he, he was known. He was shot 12 times. Um, it was said that he gave a death confession to the police, saying that Train shot him. I want to say they said G-Train ended up going to trial for that, and being found not guilty. It was said that he like maybe called Cowboy over to the car, but nobody could identify him with a weapon. Two guys by the name of Frederick Johnson and Albert Smith, they actually uh, took the fall for that. Um, it was charged for voluntary manslaughter. Um, and in 1998, they said he was suspected to have shot at two GD gang members from a moving car. A week later, officers um, said that they found him over the dead body of a guy by the name of Demetrius Jones. Uh, so it was, it was a real, real fast time from like 1997 going forward for G Train. Um, a lot of people in the street see that his name was rising at that time. Everybody wanted to be around him. Everybody wanted to be associated with him. It's a guy that we covered called Finesse the number two times. Uh, and he is going to be from Memphis. He actually has a song called G-Train that kind of just shows you um, the level of respect that this man kind of commands even though it's this time, um, and pretty much show you how Memphis and definitely South Memphis people like Lord did drug lords with like Craig Pettis. Um, but 
I want to say G Train came to his demise on November the 10th, 1999. And he was said to not only be like a, a big time street dude, but he had businesses. They said that he owned several businesses. I know one was going to be a club called a headquarters. And that's actually where he ended up being murdered at. I think the other business that they said that he owned was going to be a barbershop. Now, when he was murdered, he was murdered, like I said, November the 10th, 1999. And in a commercial appeal, a guy by the name of Chris Conley wrote an article where he said that the city is on alert for retaliation and gang killings. And pretty much was saying how police were stepping up their surveillance in the city's gang operations, hoping to head off violence and retaliation for the execution of G Train. Um, and they pretty much, at that time, they estimated that it was up to 12,000 people belonging to certain amount of some large gangs, um, pretty much in that area. And G Train, who was 29 at the age of his death, was the fourth gang boss to come prey to either the legal system or the bullet in the last several months uh, that was going to be towards the end of 1999 in Memphis. And uh, uh, some of these guys that we're definitely going to cover, um, I have one definitely I have my eye on, but some of the other guys that ended up falling victim at that time was going to be a guy by the name of Marcus Boyd. If anybody remember any of these other cases too, y'all get in the comment box. I know y'all know about G Train. Now, Marcus Boyd, now we talked about the gangs in Memphis. These are going to be some of the other gang bosses to have some kind of legal troubles or were ended up being murdered. At, towards the end of 1999 in Memphis. It's going to be Marcus Boyd. He was the former head of Memphis's largest gang, which is going to be the Gangster Disciples. Um, he was recently charged in the execution of a high-ranking GD from Chicago by the name of Omar Stokes. Um, and he was also facing conspiracy charges. It was another guy by the name of Louis Grimes, who was the leader or the ambassador of the Blackstones in Memphis, and he's facing charges for murder. Um, when, it, in a, with a wild twist, where he sent for use to boost clothing from some place, maybe a department store, to replenish $1,500 that was taken from the gang till while fleeing from that alleged theft. In their stolen car, the youths ran into an officer by the name of Don Overton, um, killing him in a squad car. So it was a rough, rough time in Memphis for gangs towards the millennium. Um, and yeah, at G Train's funeral, um, just to kind of get back on track with him. It was said that there were hundreds and hundreds of people and mourners there. Um, he's still a huge figure in Memphis. I seen in, I want to say maybe like in 2011, I can't remember where the club that he actually owned ended up being burned down. And they said how it was a notorious place and it hadn't been open, even though it burned down since his murder, um, so he's still kind of looming and having his effect on the city, anybody know any stories, anything about G-Train, anybody else we should cover, definitely from Memphis, South Memphis, you know I fuck with y'all, it's your boy Pablo, it's the mob, make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T, and we're gonna be back with the real trill spill, it's your boy Pop, mob. Mob, mob, ties.